Hello! Today we're going to be going through the November Powerful Packs box. I'm very excited for this box for a particular reason. Not only because it's been an eon since I've opened a Powerful Packs box, but it also happens to be Powerful Packs fifth birthday. So I'm excited to see what kind of special goodies they have packed in here. And by packed, I mean it. I don't know if you can tell that it is bulging, but it is. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it and see what they crammed in here. That was like a drum roll. <laughs> All right, let's see. First thing I see is a Powerful Packs branded pencil case. They might have included this last year, but I'm not entirely sure. It looks very familiar. So it's like a felt bag. Mine has a couple dots on it. That's fine. That's fine. I like the, um, what do you call this? Faux leather zipper pull. Looks like you could fit quite a few things in there. I like that it's not too big either, because then you can actually kind of throw it in a backpack without it taking up all of the space. All right, next up, oh, hey, acrylic paints. It's the Amsterdam General Selection set of six. So it looks like it's pretty much primary colors. And you have green, black, and white. I don't know if you've ever painted with acrylics, but I, I go through a lot of white. So it's always handy to have an extra one, no matter how small, they all, they all count. <laughs> They're very well packaged. Oh, they have a little lid. It actually is kind of useful because you can just stick them in there for storage. But it looks like we've got titanium white, primary yellow, primary red, oh, and you guessed it, primary blue. Oh no, stop! <gasps> it's ultramarine. <laughs> and then permanent green deep. And finally, oxide black. So they're 20 milliliters each. And they have a little light fast meter as well. And so like the yellow is sort of transparent, whereas the white is very opaque. Blue is very transparent, if that's what that means. I'm not sure about that. The black's very opaque. The permanent dark green has a line through it. So I don't know, does that mean it's more transparent? And then the red one is semi-transparent, I think. We'll have to test and see. I have been having a lot of fun with acrylic paint lately, so I'm excited to see what we can do with these. All right, next up I see a palette knife. This is the one by Art Alternatives. I, I don't know what it is about these, they're just kind of beautiful to me. <laughs> That's all they got. Oh, hey, look at the sticker. That's cute. I like how the candles are art supplies. Well, actually they're all paint brushes and it says happy fifth anniversary palettful. That's cute. I like the design. Boop. What else? What else? We got a little pad of paper. Not little pad. It's, it's actually three canvas textured art boards. Great for acrylics, gouache, oil pastels, and mixed media. I think we have used these once with like markers or something. I think it was a three pack. Because if it is, then I, or, I could have used it a couple weeks ago when I wanted it. You can probably see the texture, hopefully. And if not, you can hear it. Very cool. I really want to use that, I think. But I also see they have a classic cotton canvas, size 8 by 10. What were these? Are these also 8 by 10? Yes, they were. This is by Art Alternatives. It's a classic cotton, 8 by 10. Let's get it off. It's three quarter inch profile. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, it's already primed. It says 10 ounce primed, 5 ounce unprimed. Don't know what that means, but it's primed with acid-free acrylic gesso, stretched by hand and back stapled. Lovely. I'm not sure what to use. Should I use this? What this? <gasps> I have options. There's quite a few things in this box. I'm actually quite impressed. What else do we have here? It looks like some kind of line art. It's a 0.5 Winsor & Newton fine liner. Yep. Oh, it's that one with the funky little, I don't know, just the way this, I was gonna say concaves, but that's not the word. I don't know. You know, it doesn't really look like a, one of these. You see, you see the difference? It's like a smooth transition. <laughs> just amuses me. Oh, is this a gray? Do you think it writes in gray? Oh yeah, it is cool gray. Interesting. That's definitely not gonna show up on top of paint. So I'm not sure what this is for. Maybe this is for like sketching underneath, but it's a 0.5. So I'm not sure how well that would work on a textured canvas, but we can try. I don't know. It doesn't look like they include um, menus anymore. So I guess you're supposed to figure out what the item is by looking at it. What do they expect from me? <laughs> All right, we also have a paintbrush. It looks like it's an oval flat. For some reason it's in a little baggie that does not open. I don't have to rip it. Ah, sheesh. Ooh, that's really pretty. Do you see that handle? It's like sapphire. <laughs> it's actually called sapphire. It explains a lot. It's very pretty. The Robert Simmons size eight. I think that's called... I'm so glad these used to include menus because I learned a lot from them. <laughs> but I think this is called an oval flat brush. But it's really nice. I like the weight of it and I like the shape of it. And finally, there is a little purple Posca. Ready to get to see this brand new Posca? 
Oh my gosh, that's so small. I do have a white this size though, I'm pretty sure. Is this it? Yeah, look, they can be best friends. Oh no, it's a little, wait, what is happening? Must have been leaking a smidge. Now it's all over me. Fun, fun. What size is it? It says it's 0.7. I guess that's pretty small for a pasta. Give it a little shake. Careful, I don't want to destroy the noob. Oh, there she is. Oh, that's really nice, like royal purple. What is it called? It's called violet. Probably more accurate. Goodbye, little green maggots. <laughs> I'm so tempted to shove them in here. <laughs> Why am I doing this? I don't know. Get this at Hobby Lobby, don't you think? Gonna put this to the side. Take a look at what we're working with. I do need to swatch these because I am not sure about the transparency levels. Wow, there's a lot of like stuff on this. Not a fan of stuff. Ooh, what should we paint? We have a pretty good selection of colors. I do want to go back to like my roots and try to only use what they've provided. I'm always so tempted to like grab my own stuff, but no, 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 no. We're gonna try and use what's here. So there's no pencil. So I'm not gonna grab a pencil. Okay, we all in agreement here. <laughs> I'm thinking a landscape might be fun. This is really pretty. You can stay in frame if you'd like. I don't mind. But I will grab my sketchbook just to like swatch. I don't think that counts. That's not cheating. It's not using an art supply. It's using a surface. What if I paint over top of this guy? <laughs> There's just this random sketch on this page. This seems perfect for swatching to me, but I'm also gonna use this as my palette because for some reason that sounds like a good idea to me. So we have white, which said it was very opaque and it looks very opaque. Then we have yellow, which says it's semi-opaque, I think. I I could look that up. That is always that up. It's hard to tell when it's a big blob though. Cause like, this is the paint that's clear. You can tell it's not like <laughs> a large mass of it is not. See this one, I don't know how to show you this, but I've always thought, and I'm pretty sure that when there's a little square that has to do with how opaque the paint is. So when it's a solid square, that means it's fully opaque. And then the little plus Pluses have to do with the light fastness, I believe. So like this blue one is equally light fast, but the square is empty. So is it empty because this is a dark paint and they're saying like the blue through the square is the opaqueness? Or does that mean this one is very transparent? And then the yellow one's half of it filled, which makes me think it's semi-opaque, but usually yellow is very transparent. And then the red is also like, looks like semi-opaque. And then the green, this is a whole new one, has a line through it so i don't know what that means either i am uncertain but we should be able to figure that out as soon as we start like blobbing it down you know oh, those look so cute oh you can't see my little dollops they look like they got little, little like snow caps on them or whatever i need to mix colors for this i want green oh i'm already not using the palette knife and i'm mixing in a little bit of yellow for this plant cute Try to keep it inside the lines might add a little more yellow to it color in her pants you can see this is definitely transparent though. I haven't added any water and you can see the pencil right underneath of it. Basically the green was the one with the line through it. Which makes me think it's like way transparent. So make, I need a brown color. So I'm gonna try red, blue, and a little yellow. And add a little bit of white. These can be the boots. And I've got like an idea of what the colors will look like. So hopefully this works out. This could be good for like gloves too. And maybe even the apron. She's a gardener. This one already is more opaque. I don't know if it's because I added the white and I mixed all three of those colors, but the white's definitely making it more difficult to see the pencil underneath. What if I just add yellow and then mix in whatever's on my brush for the socks? Ooh, yep, very transparent. I actually want it less saturated. Can I add white? Ooh, it's kind of a gross. Well, it's kind of a mustardy color, I guess. <laughs> kind of use the color that's already on here for this. Then we need some kind of like pot color, maybe red and yellow, a little white. Ooh, that's a perfect terracotta color. How did I manage that one? Just kind of layered on top of the other brown. I'm liking this brown better. We need some kind of hair color too. It's going to be a skin tone. What if I add just a lot of white to this? Maybe add a little bit of that yellow in too. Does that work? Huh. Yeah, look at that. I haven't done like characters with paint in a long time. Add a little more red to it. For a little nose color. Maybe some blush. And maybe the ears. Do a little dirt on this. I don't know. I didn't really draw anything that they're standing on. And we need a hair color. Oh, you know what? I never blobbed on any of the black. This one's very opaque too, so you gotta be very careful. A little bit is gonna go a long way. Yeah, I can make it like a gray. Here we go. I'm getting a little feel for the art supplies at least. Now for line art our options, like for a little definition, I guess, since my paintbrush is so thick, I can either use this purple or the gray. Let's try out the Posca pen. I'm a Posca. 
makeup. Wow, what is that handwriting? This could work as a liner. Maybe not with these colors specifically, but I'm gonna try it. Maybe it'll look cool as a fun little pop of saturation. Definitely finding a little uh, definition. Since I'm using this girl, I feel like we should maybe use her for inspiration on what to draw on the canvas. Do I want to do like a character illustration maybe? Here we go. I haven't tried this gray fine liner. Oh, that's actually kind of dark. It's like little zebra plants. Is that what they kind of look like? Look at her little hands. I like the baggier looking shirt, so I'm gonna add some wrinkles in there. I'm not sure what kind of shirt it would be. I feel like a kind of a looser collar might make more sense. Now, do you think paint will go over this? The problem is some of these paints are so opaque or transparent, I mean, but you're going to see these lines underneath of it. What happens if I take like yellow, which is supposed to be semi-transparent? Go over this. Yep, I'd say you can see through that. And then the green has the weird line. I wanna try the green. What does that mean? Still quite transparent. <laughs> We'll try a blue. The blue does seem to have the least opaqueness. It kind of just loses itself in the color. The amount of pigment doesn't go as far. I'll take white and cut it in. See how this is opaque? It goes right over the color. The colors underneath are a little wet. It's not gonna be perfect, but yeah, got the idea. Oh yeah, going with that JC Line Decker kind of vibe. Not to say this looks anything like what he would have drawn, but you know, the like white cutting in stuff. Look him up, an excellent painter and artist. Whew. Oh, that's what I was doing. I was experimenting to see what drew over the line art. So I have definitely determined that the square means opaque and the not full square means not opaque. So I'm thinking if I like drew a character on the canvas, I wanna draw her pretty big and just have her holding this butt with some kind of fun plant in it. Or, okay, now this is the canvas. Go with like a character art where it's like a white background and just one of those floaty characters with a pot. We could have like some kind of leafy thing going around. <laughs> or could do a horizontal landscape vibe and maybe a table like plants. Maybe it's not a table, it's a pot, a planter. Plants coming up here. And then she could be like planting something, giving it some love and attention. This in the background. I also should look up some plants. Or should they be like magical plants? Cause then I could add little magical sparkles. I'm biting off way more than I can chew. Oh yeah. But this would be a really fun idea. I just wish I had a pencil. Try another horizontal one. Maybe some hanging plants. What if she's just walking or watering something? Plants everywhere. Maybe still the greenhouse vibe. That's why this one looks the best, but one of these sort of ideas would be easier. Do I go for the easier vibe or the better vibe? Also, I wanna look up a zebra plant, see what they actually look like. That doesn't really look anything like that. <laughs> well, there is something that looks similar, but then when it gets bigger, the leaves kind of expand a bit more. It's also like yellow flowers, which are really cute and would add a lot of contrast. But like when it starts out, it's like in a little pot it's got all these little guys that stick out that have stripes on them. And then when it gets bigger, it gets these big leaves on it. And then those have more stripes like this. There we go. Baby zebra, big zebra. I mean, unless it's actually a different breed. Oh, and then it has some flowers, which are yellow. This is transparent though, so it's probably not going to work that well. I mean, that's a green. I would need a much smaller paintbrush to get any sort of detail with this. If I get to the point where I need a smaller paintbrush, I think I will. Cause it's like, they did include a paintbrush, you know? What am I doing? If I want to do it, I'll do it. Add a little blue for shading maybe. It also needs a little brown. Let's try. Can I use this purple Posca? Look, I didn't do too many sketchy lines. I could probably use this to add a little something like this. Maybe a little bit of white. I'll just grab this Posca. I've given up on that idea. This is a little too thick. <laughs> Way too thick. I think I have a size between these two. Interesting. Yeah, not really the vibe I was hoping for. Then. I could just try and focus on making those. Or another idea. Lots of snake, not snake plants, zebra plants. Maybe even a hanging one. Well, it would be a different kind of plant. I don't think it's a hanging plant. I'm like that. Got options. We got options. To redraw our character. I'm gonna have much poofier sleeves. Then I'm gonna have them cuffed a little shorter so then you can see the gloves. Little face pocket. I'm thinking I don't want the apron to get tighter at the waist. I think I want it to be one of those less fitted kind. And then boots. <laughs> so cute. But how do I do this with paint? Specifically these paints. So transparent. We have a couple here. What if I just try a couple different things? Maybe use one of the boards just to see if you can even sketch with this. That would be a good test. 
So if I wanted to do like a snake plant, actually, why don't I sketch with the paint? I don't have a raw umber, but I should have a paintbrush and I have water so I could sketch in green. I grab a little bit more green, put it in one of these divots so I can add a lot of water too. And the green's really transparent, so I don't think I'll even need much water to make this really sketchable. So what I'm thinking is the edge of the pot is here. Ooh, look how that looks. <laughs> the edge of the pot and then I want the plant coming up and out of this. Uh, there's a leaf here. Mm-hmm. And I'll put a leaf here. I guess it needs a stem. Does it like spring outwards at the top maybe? More water, more paint. Didn't quite draw this small enough I don't think. Probably put some little pieces back here. And then I want one of those little flowers at the top. That's yellow. Uh-huh. This is where the stem would kind of be. That little shading, I don't know. Just to differentiate those two leaves. And then we'll have all the stripes as well. It seems like their stems are usually kind of twirly. Okay, there you go. There's my zebra plant, I guess. Looks like they can have multiple flowers, so I might stick another flower right here. All right, I do not know what the next step is. <laughs> Probably figure out what color I want these plants to be. They should be kind of a bluish green. I'm gonna take all this green and some blue, to darken it up, maybe add a little yellow, make it more green. I might even add a teensy inch black. That was too much. I'll we'll paint one of these. Let's see what it looks like. Mm, cool. Oh yeah, that's a little too dark. Color in the whole leaf. <laughs> Definitely need more green and more yellow. This is so transparent, it's not gonna feel the layer. Add a little white to it. That'll make it more opaque. I'm not sure that I'm going about this right. I just feel vastly unprepared for some reason. Or if I try it in a different way, like filling in the squares, so then it'll leave white for the zebra-ness. In a way, this looks better. That looks kind of cool. Until you look closely and see all the texture. A little yellow, put it on this side. To give it a different vibe from this left side of the leaf. It's just so slow going. And I feel like I haven't done anything. That's my lazy self getting in the way though. It just looks so sloppy. Like obviously it's sort of the beginning stages. With acrylic paint, I just always get so stuck. And then I don't know what to do. And that's how I'm feeling. Basically trying a different technique with each leaf and maybe we'll come up with a plan by the time I'm done. Is that a good strategy? My favorite part is kind of globbing it on and when the paint's transparent, I don't find that as amusing. I really like opaque stuff. So maybe I need to like delve back into gouache. Is that what it's telling me? I mean, it looks like a plant. Make a terracotta color. You know what would have been handy for this? The palette knife. <laughs> Ooh, that's not quite the right same color I made last time. But for now, I'll just glab it on here since I made enough of it. Also, look how opaque this is. That's satisfying to me. Also, another thing that's a little bit frustrating for me is like the blending. If I'm just used to like digital painting where you can smudge anything around and it'll look beautiful for the most part. I'll wait for that to dry before I add a more terracotta -y color on top. It'll be more effective if it's dry anyway. I do want that flower to be way yellower though. Maybe just mix it with white. Bloop. <laughs> That's more the color I'm looking for. Even that is still slightly transparent. Kind of shrink that down and maybe we'll be able to layer something on top of that. We've been a little bit of red. Now what have I done? That looks kind of cool. I've got an idea. I'm gonna clean the brush. I'm gonna grab some yellow. I'm gonna go over the white spaces on this. See if it leaves the green kind of alone. What do you think is gonna happen? I'm interested in finding out. Just to fill in that white. Mm, kind of worked. I like the way it looks with the blobby green. I think that has a very cool organic texture to it. Ooh, ooh, what am I doing? This looks cool. Do the same thing on this side, just kind of looks more rounded. I wonder if we can do the same thing on this since it's kind of a light color. Just paint in the inverse of the stripes. Let's do the same thing up here, I guess. I'm a fan of the vibe. Now this one looks weird not having any yellow on it. it. Makes a little more blue with the green. Hopefully get dark enough to show up. It's just there's always the white gaps. That's what like irks me. I keep trying and they- Doesn't work. I should be having a little more fun. <laughs> I'm just gonna put this aside since it's gotta dry anyway before I can really do anything else. And we'll grab another one of these boards and come up with a new plan. <laughs> My other plan is just paint the gardener. I'm definitely gonna need a smaller paintbrush for that. Maybe start with the Posca pen. Let's try it. Give her little hips, legs. It's definitely not a very painterly style, so we'll see what happens. 
little neck, shoulders, eyebrows, maybe a smile. Then I want those big poofy sleeves, kind of cuffed with hands in big old gloves. I don't know what this style is, but it looks cool. <laughs> We need the apron. See, this is fun to me. Drawing. Painting just don't quite hit the same spot. But drawing is fun. Drawing makes me happy. A little collar. Maybe a patch might be cute. I don't know. We'll see if that makes it any further. I had to shrink down the apron because I didn't want to cover the glove. I feel like pull it in a little more. Then it could be like that long. Socks and boot. Another boot. That's looking good. See, I'm having fun. I think what I want is it to look like I did it with um, gouache and that's not gonna happen. Unless I mix all of them with white, I could almost make it work, but I'll need a bigger palette. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I was doing something else. <laughs> Put this here. I can mix lots of white and make almost makeshift gouaches. I'm gonna go with a similar color scheme to this, but I want it to be a bit more saturated. So we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna start with a skin tone. That shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. But I think what I made was red and yellow and white and if i run out of white we'll grab my own white at this point i just want to have a little fun all right so i need to mix kind of equal parts of this sort of and lots of this hey that's a nice saturated skin tone if i want to go for it i need a smaller paintbrush and this one might be too small let's fill that in and fill this in and the neck do we have a purple i could have got blue just a smidge of this more red Kind of create a shading color. Okay, I could probably use this guy for the face. Oh, this is so saturated. It's almost orange. The bigger spaces, I can definitely see the Posca pen sneaking through. Oh, I didn't even draw the eyes. Are we going with the dot eyes? <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. Draw over those then. What would be nice is a magenta to mix in with this to make blush. But I'll try just to add a little bit more of the red and that purple. Match to light. Use that for the nose. It's not quite different enough. I make this more blushy. Blue, not quite the right tone. I would like a little blush. Oop, second layer, we're kind of losing the eyes now. Get the face a little lighter. So now maybe blush will look better. Hmm? It's way more contrast, at least. I don't know what art style this is, but it's cute. There we go. That should do it. I want a browner color for the gloves. I'm gonna try just adding a little black first. But I mean, tiny smidgen amounts. I do not want much at all. Beep, boop. Try that for a glove. See how it looks? A little too similar, probably, but that is the vibe I want, where it's kind of like a light brown. And I need a darker version, maybe with some blue. Maybe some black. To somehow make that look like gloves, like fingers. Mm, that's not working. <laughs> now it's becoming a gray color. I don't know what I did. I've got to wait for that to dry. But let's just throw some of this color on here so that at least they'll sort of match. I'm trying to do like a cell shading sort of thing, but I don't really know what the fingers look like because <clears throat> I went too opaque. Let's try and mix a brown though for the apron. I think we need lots of green, lots of red and yellow and blue. Make brown and white it's kind of a brown color Let's see what that looks like on white sometimes it's hard to tell Ooh, that's actually quite perfect maybe go a little lighter but for a first layer i think this will work pretty darn good use a different color for the pocket just to give it contrast since i'm going with kind of a cutesy style i think pushing the cartooniness in that way might be good and i guess the boots as well would be this color Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add some white to this. Try and make that pocket color. Hey! This is kind of the color I wanted the gloves to be too. Cover over all this again. Start over. Maybe if I sketch on it with the Posca pen I'll have a better vibe. But I don't want the gray. That's kind of meh. Although I have this darker one. I don't know if it shows up well enough. I wouldn't mind that lighter gray for the pants either. But before I had it with green, so what if I mix it with green? So it's like a brown green. Ooh, look at that. It's like a nice foresty green. This might look good up here too. I'm gonna make a lighter version, so let's grab some white. Maybe even add a little yellow to make it more saturated. Make a brighter version. Kneecaps maybe. And the top of this. Now I want way more yellow. Now I want to color in this and this. It's like Shrek green. Maybe use one of these browns for this patch thing. Definitely gonna need shading up in here, but I'm still very happy I moved to doing this instead of that zebra plant. I'm embarrassed how much I was frustrated by that. I don't think I was hiding it very well. Very earthy tones, which I'm appreciating. I didn't quite mix enough. Some laces look more like boots. Add a little bit more white for this section to separate it. 
just trying to fill in these little white spaces that are driving me nuts. Kind of create that ribbed texture. This definitely needs some shading. I also need a hair color. I'm thinking about mixing the skin and this brown. Let's just look for a hair. Ooh, nice. It's like a auburn -y red color. <laughs> I think it matches the color scheme pretty good. Looking kind of cool. What do you think? To use a little bit of this color, kind of incorporate it more. I think I'm going to use the liner to fix that. So I just have to wait for this to dry. And we'll go over with the purple Bosca and really finalize it and we'll see how that looks. I probably should get some white and block out the sketch stuff that I don't need anymore. It doesn't really cover over the purple as well as I'd like. But I can use this to kind of chisel away at some of the paint. We're also going over that with all purple, which will clean up the edge a bit too. You can make it as thick as I have to, really. I could even shrink it down more if I really had to. Like, part of me says to do this. And I just did it. <laughs> Separate the fingers down here. What would happen if I added a little white right here? Doesn't really make sense. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that. Kind of giving it a circle since you can see it. All right, so now I'm just gonna wait for this all to dry and then we'll come back with the purple. And I think it's gonna look so dramatically different, especially if I mess something up, but we will see. Be right back. All right, it's dried. I'm gonna take the purple Bosco and uh, yeah, add the line art. Do the eyeballs, I guess. Use this also to fill in these icky white gaps between colors. I dislike it strongly. Mm, well, look, oops, I had to move it over. <laughs> Now, Posca pen, if you don't know, is acrylic paint in a pen form. So you don't want to be putting your hand in it before it's dry. It works just like paint. It usually dries pretty fast because the flow is so minimal. Where'd this yellow paint come from? I really don't want to ruin this in the last possible second. Smile. Here. I kind of feel like drawing in the eyebrows. Seems, I don't know. I don't understand, but it looks cool. It's called Details. Add a little uh, texture to this, like it's a little worn. I don't know how well you'll see it. Kind of go around the thumb and the fingies and this thumb, and these fingies, boots, to suck. Oh, I wish I'd taken the white and kind of changed the shape of that, which I suppose I could. Oh, I do like that way better. I love it. And there she is. I'm gonna go over that with a little bit more white once it dries. But here's a nice close up of this thing I made. Oh, wait, I was gonna add, add shading to this somehow. Kind of like depth to separate it. It's like in shadow, you know? Anyway, I wanna thank you guys for watching. I'll give you one last look at this thing. Mm hmm, there it is. Ooh, yeah, mm, mm, fun. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's just like the colors are all over the place, whereas this one feels more. More cohesive. Although I did give this one more effort. In this one I was like experimenting with each leaf. But yeah, I'm much happier with how this turned out. These are the paints. Amsterdam Royal Talons acrylics. They work real nice. I'm not sure why some of them are so transparent. And if you know what these little boxes mean, each little symbol, I would love to know. I would really love to know. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me as I went through the fifth year of palatable packs and box. It was a fun box. I wish I liked acrylics a bit more. I'm really trying to like enjoy them more. <laughs> and I think it'll come with time as I learn different techniques to get things done the way I want them to be. Managed to make that look worse right before I said goodbye. So goodbye so I can fix this. <laughs> Bye.